This is not a good one. This is not a good one. You know, this is not... This is not Frozen. Where, you know... It was good. But not... overly good. The saddest part is that... One match... One match made this... This whole pay-per-view hell. And I mean hell. The rest of it was amazing, but, you know, there could have been nothing but villain wins throughout this entire thing. And you just change that one match, and, yeah, the pay-per-view still would have been shit. But it wouldn't have been company ending. This is company ending. A lot of viewers. A lot of viewers are leaving. And you think I'm over-exaggerating, but... If you haven't seen the pay-per-view... Then you, you just don't know. But you can... you can probably guess. There's only one kind of match that could go wrong at a WrestleMania that would warrant this, this, this numbness, this lack of care. So welcome to mitosis, my intricate thoughts on stuff I've seen. This is going to be spoiler heavy, so I'll put that in the beginning there. So if you guys have not seen WrestleMania 30, live, on pay-per-view, paying your hard-earned money, don't watch this. Watch it after we do. Or if you don't care about spoilers. But you'll care. You're going to care a lot. I'm going to preface this by saying... Two years ago, I told everyone I knew, stop watching wrestling. Two years ago was when it got stupid to the point of no return. There is no coming back. And I know that there are going to be people that said it, it, it fell years before that. But I, I, I lost, I, I was at my breaking point about two years ago. Because it got stupid. It never got insulting until this, this past eight months. But it was stupid. Kane, Kane and Daniel Bryan started going to anger management classes and hugging. You know, we had people like Fandango come out. I love Fandango because of just how into his shitty character he is. But he's stupid. Your best diva was AJ Lee. Your best diva is still AJ Lee. You know. Natalia? No. No, she couldn't... She couldn't wrestle. And she knew it. And I think that Jim... I think that Jim Neidhart knows it. Everybody else is just there for tits. <sighs> So let's go down the list. I have it on Wikipedia here off to the side. Let's go down the list. So you can know what led up to this bullshit. WrestleMania kickoff. I'm assuming that this one was free. I never watched it. But I'll tell you the I'll tell you the, the results anyway. The Usos defeated Los Matadores. Diego and Fernando with El Torito because we don't know they're the Primo and Epico, right? We're not supposed to we're not supposed to know that. The Real Americans and Rybaxel. Yeah, that's an actual thing. They defeated them in a fatal four-way 
tag team elimination match for the tag team championships, which have not mattered for the longest time. Second match. This is the match that that they opened with. Daniel Bryan and Triple H. The winner of this match got to go on to the World Heavyweight, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship Triple Threat match. This was the longest match in the show, clocking in at 25 minutes 56 seconds. Let's just say 26 minutes. And this was really good. This was really good. And Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan wins. It was at that moment that I immediately changed my prediction for the championship match. And I said it was going to be Daniel Bryan. Because that's what they're going to do with Daniel Bryan. They're going to have him overcome every single odd that they can and win. They're basically going to have him be the modern-day Chris Jericho. Although the tag team, uh, the um, not the tag team, but the World Heavyweight and WWE Championships are already unified. So basically they did Chris Jericho's work for him, but instead used Daniel Bryan. They, they really had a tendency of doing that. They didn't want to make a new world, they didn't want to make a new WrestleMania. They wanted to bring back old ones. Before this match, Hulk Hogan came out and spewed his shit. Then the glass broke. Stone Cold Steve Austin comes out, spews his shit, which is infinitely more entertaining than watching Hulk Hogan, the fucking fossil and deadbeat father that he is, go out there and sell himself because TNA fucking failed. Although, you know what? You know what? TNA might be doing better now. I might even switch to fucking TNA. Switch over, see how they're doing. It's gotta be better than this. Then The Rock comes out. Where the fuck has he been? Who knows? Who cares? It's the fucking Rock. He comes out. He spews his, like, four or five catchphrases. And they all catchphrase off. Now, if you... If you smell what The Rock is cooking, that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold says so. What you gonna do? There's a little bit of a funny exchange where the where uh, Hulk Hogan called the Superdome the Silverdome, like twice. And then Rock and Stone Cold just started shitting on him for that. Whatever. What do we got next? The Shield defeats Kane and the New Age Outlaws. This is a three-minute match. This is a shit stomp. The Shield just ended them. Kane, the Big Red Machine, the Big Red Monster, the, the Hellfire and Brimstone, must have been in that match for a grand total of 45 seconds. And they basically threw him off to check his blood sugar or some shit. I don't fucking know. Kane wasn't a part of this match. The New Age Outlaws were punching bags. And I mean punching bags, because when Roman Reigns enters that ring, fucking bodies hit the floor. When Dean Ambrose enters that ring, bodies hit the bed. Because Dean Ambrose is the most boring motherfucker I've ever seen in my life can't talk, can't wrestle. He's the only one in that group with a title. The United States title, which has meant less than the Tag Team Championships ever since he's held it. It needs to change hands, but it won't because the Shield fight is a team. Which is why stables should not have individual titles in them. Because who the fuck is going to feud with Dean fucking Ambrose? Nobody, because no one cares. It's all about the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. 
the stupidest fucking idea that WWE has come up with. Is unifying those titles. That's why the United the Unified Championship didn't exist for very long. Because then you have less matches. You have less people on your roster that can do anything. Sheamus, Big Show, fucking. Roman Reigns. None of these people have fucking anything to do. And that brings me into my next match. The Andre the Giant Memorial 30-Man Battle Royal for the Andre the Giant Memorial Trophy. And if I were Andre, I would be spinning in my grave so hard I moved a tectonic fucking plate. Antonio Cesaro. I'm going to give you some time. Before you realize, I'm not joking. Cesaro won this. He eliminated Big Show. He was... It came down to him and Big Show. And no one thought it was going to be Cesaro. Cesaro doesn't do shit. But it was. It was Cesaro. And he picked him up in a fucking body slam. It was the Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant body slam. They like, play the two videos side by side. He picked him up in the same way. And then threw him over the top rope. Which, by the way, Big Show had to guide him into it. Of course he did. It's Cesaro. The fucking man has no concept of center of gravity. <sighs> 12 minutes, 47 seconds. Nice little intermission. John Cena and Bray Wyatt. I knew John Cena was going to win this. And he did. Of course he did. Because it's Bray fucking Wyatt. The man's creepy. The man rocks his gimmick like no person before him could have. But he can't wrestle. He's a tank. He can take hits. And he can smash his gut into people. And he's got that one move, the, uh, the Sister Abigail. Which sucks. But this was a decent match. They played up this whole uh, John Cena uh, giving in to his dark side thing. John Cena, of course, hamming, hamming it up. You know, whenever he was about to give in to his dark side, you know, it wasn't a gradual thing. It was one moment he's Cena, and the next minute... Like, he's being possessed. Literally. And that would have been cool. You know, we were thinking, hey, hey, maybe Cena will lose this. Maybe Cena will go heal. We actually contemplated that for, like, 30 seconds. I know. I know. I'm happy to see Cena win. I've been a big Cena fan for the longest time, you know, despite people completely shitting on me for it. I like the superhero. You know, I like the guy that can always win. They even fucking... They even in the beginning of the show compared, you know, John Cena to Hulk Hogan. Because John Cena is the new Hulk Hogan. Selling merchandise to the kids. You know, always being there for the kids. He's that guy that always won. Brush your teeth, say your prayers, eat your vitamins. Hustle, loyalty, respect, it's the same shit. Daniel Bryan's the new Stone Cold Steve Austin. Going against the authority, sticking it to the man. Not nearly as cool as Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know, driving a Steve Weiser truck and pelting them with beer hoses. But Daniel Bryan does his own thing, and I like it. Because Daniel Bryan's a fucking hoot and a half to watch. 23 minutes. Even. Congrats on that one. You guys ready? 
Because, you know, here's the thing. I can see what people are saying. So far, this sounds like a wicked WrestleMania. And I guarantee you, the next two matches after this, amazing matches. Amazing matches. So what is this one? This one's Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker. So let's say it together, shall we? 21 and 1. Twenty-one and one. I still don't believe it. This was the second longest match of the night. As it should have been. Clocking in at 25-25. But God, it seemed like a ten-minute match. Why am I mad? Am I mad because The Undertaker... Because The Undertaker lost... And his streak is done. Yeah, I think I, I think that's got to be there somewhere, you know. No one's happy to see the Undertaker lose. Had to have happened at some point. Would have liked it to not have been Brock Lesnar, the emotionless, vapid, just brainless oaf with the mating call of a fucking crow. With that insufferable Paul Heyman. God, Paul Heyman does his fucking job well, doesn't he? He's supposed to go out there and be the most annoying motherfucker in the world, and he just does it. If you see the promo that Paul Heyman cuts for Brock Lesnar before this match goes on, that's some of Paul Heyman's best acting I've ever seen. And Paul Heyman has... Paul Heyman has managed it all, and he's just never stopped being this slimy bastard. So why am I mad? Two reasons. If we're not going to count the fact that The Undertaker lost his streak. Two reasons why I'm mad. One, this match sucked. This match was a merciless beatdown of The Undertaker. The Undertaker got in a couple of good shots every now and then. He got a choke slam. He got a last ride in the position that every superstar puts themselves in to, put, to get a fucking last ride. There's no reason for Brock Lesnar to go to the second fucking rope. None. He's Brock Lesnar. The last time he got on the ropes, he nearly snapped his neck doing a shooting star press. Come off it. Literally come off it. Because you were looking for a last ride and you found it. Of course he didn't fucking... He didn't even cover you. Because that old man was just so done. He took a tombstone. Onto that just empty fucking head. Boom. Kicked out of that. Undertaker took two F5s, kicked out of those. Finally spun out for that third F5. This is a man that's taken three Sweet Chin Musics and two Pedigrees and gotten up like it ain't done shit. That third F5, no effort. No one was even on the edge of their seat for this one. No one expected this to be the ending one. The, the whole arena was silent. You know, when, when we think The Undertaker's about to lose, you know, we're sitting there like, one, two, nobody. Nobody moved. Because this shouldn't have ended him. But yeah, one, two, three. And then what do you do? There wasn't any booing. There wasn't any crying. There wasn't any thing at all. No emotion. I still haven't fully recovered from it. 
my family is cheering on through the Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton, Batista match. They felt nothing. You have sunk your company. WrestleMania 30, and The Undertaker loses his streak. Not only to Brock Lesnar, but in the worst match of his career. And yes, I'm counting Undertaker versus Giant Gonzalez. I'm counting Undertaker versus CM fucking Punk. Both of those matches suck the shit ring off my fucking toilet. But it didn't suck nearly as bad. And you know why? Because in those matches, both of those men put up a fight. Giant Gonzalez was a sack of shit. But he did what he did. Which was suck. CM Punk threw everything at him. And The Undertaker threw everything at Punk. Trying to sell Punk's hit so hard. I commend you for that, you fuck. But this? Undertaker's done better matches. Fucking Brock Lesnar has done better matches. Brock Lesnar versus Triple H was a thousand times better than this match could have ever been. And that's the sad part, is that this match had no right to suck. None. Because Brock Lesnar is a wrecking machine. He doesn't need to be on the mic. That's why he has someone else on the mic for him, like Paul Heyman. Because when he does get on the mic, he sounds like a fucking idiot. And he lets out that crane mating call that he has. He doesn't need to talk. He just needs to go in and wreck house. Undertaker barely talks. He doesn't need to talk. He goes in and he wrecks house. These are two wrecking balls just coming together. And instead of it looking like two wrecking balls, it looked more like an abacus. No, that's not what I'm trying to say. Not an abacus. What are the fucking things that just... You ever see how bored someone looks when they're, when they're watching that? That was us. There was no be-all, end-all, WrestleMania 30, 30 years, over 20 years of Undertaker. This was not a good match. This was not a match that either of those men deserved. This match sucked ass through a bendy straw. And it will be what sinks you, WWE. You sold out. You sold out your arena for the first time in a year. None of your fucking venues have sold out. Why? Because people are getting wise to your bullshit. The only people you have watching your, your show anymore is kids, their unfortunate parents, and the drunk and stoned frat guys that start cheering Michael Cole during matches. Like last fucking pay-per-view. What the fuck was it? I don't care. I'm done. I was done two years ago. But my family and my friends just said, you know, keep giving it a chance. Just give it a chance. It'll get better. No. You just took your biggest legacy. Fuck Hulk Hogan. You know, Hulk Hogan is a legend. He is a legacy. He is a fucking sellout. You know, I will always remember Hulk Hogan for body slamming Andre the Giant and getting knocked unconscious and thinking he's Santa Claus. Fuck Terry Hogan. Fuck The Rock. That self-centered egotistical fuckwit. Who comes back for a couple matches a year. And then goes on to make Fast and the Furious 40. Or Hercules. 
Jesus Christ. Fucking Dwayne Johnson as Hercules. Yeah, guys, I want to do a movie. You have anything that would make me look like a hunky Adonis? Hercules, you say? That's right up my alley. I'm not going to say fuck Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold Steve Austin is awesome wherever he goes, and he had the good sense to retire and then fuck off. Return on occasion. Like, he, he, was, in t- he, was, he was one of the people from when Tough Enough got reborn for, like, a bit. And then, and then he went off hunting with Shawn Michaels. So, Steve, I respect you. Out of those three men, you're the only one who didn't stagnate. You did one movie. You did Condemned. I liked Condemned. <sighs> What's the second reason now? This is this is literally about 90% of why I'm pissed off. Undertaker didn't try for shit. Dropped to the ground, and he stayed there. Locked Lesnar in a go-go plot twice just to get some fucking pace in this match. But Undertaker, you didn't try. Lesnar was trying. But there was no give. How does Lesnar prove his dominance when you just flop on the floor? And when you lost... When you lost, Taker, what did you do? Did you look out to the crowd and thank them for all the support they've given you? Did you grab a mic? Did you give any significance that you were gonna retire? No, this is this is it. Lesnar's taken me out. I'm gonna go retire and be with my family. You didn't do that. You looked at the ramp. You didn't even look at the crowd. You laid in that ring until Lesnar and Heyman were gone. You took your sweet ass time getting up. And let's be honest, you didn't take that much fucking damage. During your match with Triple H, both Triple H and Shawn Michaels had to drag you. Drag you out. Triple H got to his fucking feet before you did. Because you put your body on the line. You did not put fuck all on the line. As far as I know, he's not even retired. Maybe he's just going to come back next WrestleMania. Like, nothing happened. When you got to the top of the ramp, Taker, did you did you raise your hand? Like you normally do? Back to the audience, raise your hand like, I'm Taker. I still got it. Take my, ma- my lose with dignity. You didn't look at them once. You didn't raise your hand. You didn't raise both of your hands. And grab your coat. Then hang your hat up. No, sim- no symbolism. Or no bluntness. Coldness. Towards everybody. Not only did you just treat everyone in that audience like they weren't in the room. But I'm going to call it right here and now. You threw... The match. You threw your career. You threw your streak. And you threw WrestleMania 30. You threw it all. And I don't know who paid you, but God, I hope it's enough to set your kids up for college for the next good couple of decades because when people remember Wrestlemania 30 the year that Undertaker's streak came to an end 
are they going to remember that Undertaker gave it his all and just died in that ring? No. They're going to remember the year that 25 long and boring minutes passed before you just gave the fuck up. I'm going to move on. But that's what ruined this entire pay-per-view. The bathroom break match came on, which is what I like to call the Divas match. You know, smoke if you got them, let the dogs out. Grab a drink, preferably an alcoholic one. That's coming from the straight edge guy. But fuck it. This actually wasn't that bad. 14 Diva single fall match for the WWE Divas Championship. AJ Lee won it. I'm glad that she did. I knew that she would. Because the odds were just so stacked against her that they always do win it. It's like, it's like Royal Rumble. You know... The guy wins the Royal Rumble, and then they go, I'm going to challenge you. And everybody's like, oh, this match is going to be awesome. And then Elimination Chamber comes up, and you're like, oh, well, the winner of the Royal Rumble might not face him because he might lose his title. He's going to keep his fucking title. Fuck you. The other guy, well, back when there used to be two titles, maybe there was a chance he could lose his title. Usually did, actually, now that I think about it. Before they unify the championships, which means, by the way, one chamber... Just pay-per-views get shorter. Or matches get longer. And that's not what you want. You don't want a fucking 25-minute match. Unless you can fucking deliver. Daniel Bryan versus Triple H deliver. Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton, and Batista delivered a 23-minute match. I know me a 25-minute match that didn't deliver fuck all. John Cena and Bray Wyatt delivered, just barely delivered, a 23-minute match. So Daniel Bryan, Randy Orton, and Batista. Daniel Bryan coming in after being attacked by Triple H after their match, because Triple H is a fucking coward. Of course he is. And, you know, Triple H and Stephanie end up coming down. Of course they fucking do. No one didn't think that Triple H and Stephanie weren't going to come down and try and cheat. And, yeah, you know, Triple H brings out the sledgehammer and throws it in the ring with Daniel Bryan. Or, no, he didn't throw it in the ring. He got up on the apron and Daniel Bryan kicked him in the gut, grabbed the fucking sledgehammer and beat his ass. They were about to wheel him off. They were about to wheel Daniel Bryan off in a stretcher because Batista and Orton comboed him through a table. The Batista bomb backwards RKO, which, by the way, was more damaging to Randy Orton than it was to fucking Daniel Bryan because he landed back first on the monitor. The only monitor they didn't take out of both of those tables, by the way, cut him right open in his back. What a fuck. So... They're about to wheel him off, but Daniel Bryan doing his, his Hulk up thing. Shades of Mick Foley versus The Undertaker. Another better Undertaker match. Well, you know, they were about to wheel Mick Foley out, and he fucking gets up, tooth lodged in his nose, and finishes the match. So, yeah. Daniel Bryan, you know, Daniel Bryan wins it, knocks out Batista. Batista, of course, Batista bombs Orton beforehand, and Orton just kind of rolls out of the ring. And Bryan picks up the win. Great. Love it. Bryan beats Triple H. Bryan beats Batista and Orton, with Triple H and Stephanie trying to interfere. Bryan overcomes all. I'm not watching wrestling after this bullshit. You think, I'm, you think I'm stupid enough to come tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw? 
where Triple H is just going to do what he did last year, which is go, oh, congratulations on winning the title. Now get it back, because I'm the COO, and I can do that. And no one's going to count, like, no one's going to call me out on power tripping, because my father-in-law is the owner of the company. No one's going to call him out on it. That's why he's done it so many times. He can just do that. Did we forget that? That Daniel Bryan literally can't win? He can win matches. He can win title matches. But he can't win. So enjoy this. Enjoy this win, guys. Daniel Bryan picked up a really good win. For now, until tomorrow when everything goes to shit, Daniel Bryan's going to come out and do his yes movement. Triple H is going to come out and just take the title from him or do some other bullshit to him because he's a COO and you can't beat the boss of your company. Oh, God. And then fucking... I can only imagine what Paul Heyman's going to be able to say tomorrow. My client... <laughs> ended the streak. He will never shut up now. Brock Lesnar owns the WWE. He is history now. <sighs> what else? What else do they got down here? Oh, they got the other participants for the for the huge matches. The the brawl that took place for fucking um, Andre the Giants thing. Let's, let's listen to these other participants because a couple of them make sense. And then the others are like, we just threw whoever we could call. So Alberto Del Rio, Big E, Brad Maddox was in this match as a wrestler. Got eliminated fairly early, but Brad Maddox, really. Brodus Clay, hasn't done shit since he tried to go heel. Cody Rhodes, Damian Sandow, Darren Young, Dolph Ziggler, Fandango. Uh, Drew McIntyre, Gold Dust, The Great Khali, Heath Slater and Jinder Mahal, Justin fucking Gabriel. Oh yeah, because I really believe that the year's biggest jobber is going to win. Kofi Kingston, who botched a landing. He was supposed to land on the steps, but he, he fell back. Luckily, his foot didn't actually reach the ground, so he did his whole fucking... Uh, his whole... Royal Rumble recovery. Mark Henry, The Miz, which I didn't even notice he was in the match until he got eliminated. Rey Mysterio, Sheamus, R-Truth, Santino Morello, who did like a Cobra thing to... I think maybe it was The Miz. Sin Cara. Titus O'Neil, Tyson Kidd. Tyson fucking Kidd. Xavier Woods, and these last two... I... I'm only reading them off in alphabetical order because that's how Wikipedia has it, but these last two will make you laugh. Yoshi Tatsu. Hey, you guys remember the Cruiserweight Championship? Neither do I. And Zack Ryder. Just wow. The other participants in the Divas match were Oksana, Alicia Fox, Brie Bella, Cameron, Emma, the fucking Christ with this Emma bullshit. Eva Marie... Layla, Naomi, Natalia, Nikki Bella, Rosa Mendez, Summer Rae, and Tamina Snuka. Just calling her Tamina at this point. Because you don't want to fucking slander the Snuka name. We also had the, the Hall of Famers came out onto the stage. And they played... Um, the Ultimate Warrior was last, and they played his music so that he came out. We all thought he was going to come out maybe in his garb. Like his whole Ultimate Warrior face paint and shit. No. Just came out in the suit. Which is f fucking fine. Whatever. I pretty much agree with everybody in the Hall of Fame. Now. You know, beforehand we had, like, Bob Barker was our Celebrity Hall of Fame. This one it was Mr. T. Which was fine, because Mr. T actually appeared in a couple of fucking matches. He was in the first ever WrestleMania with Hulk Hogan, defeating uh, Paul Orndorff and 
fuck me if I can remember. I know they mentioned it earlier on, which is the only reason that I remember it. I wasn't around during the first fucking WrestleMania, I don't know. If The Undertaker would have taken this match, or if this match would have been worth its weight in dick, this probably would have been the best WrestleMania in about seven or eight years. The last one I remember that was really fucking good was WrestleMania 23, when Vince McMahon had his head shaved. And Bobby Lashley took on Umaga. You know, rest Umaga's fucking soul, because he was a beast. And I bet he was an amazing man. I'm sad to hear that... I, I'm sad to hear that he passed. I heard that a long time ago, so when everybody's like, you didn't know... Yeah, I, oh, you didn't know? <laughs> That's the first time I've actually smiled. That's the first time I've smiled since the end of the Undertaker match. Got it on camera. I think I can smile again. Which is good. Because I didn't think I would. This... This sucked. I really want to like the other matches, but I, I can't because I'm not going to watch anymore. I'm not going to be suckered in by people saying it gets better. Because it doesn't. I've been watching this. I've been watching wrestling since about 2005. This is what, nine years ago? I would have been 11? But 2005, I really started getting into it. And it sucks because I got to see its final years of being good before in my generation it turned into this sellout fucking product placement everywhere. You know, you see... You, you know, you see catchphrase number one, two, and three in the ring there in the beginning of the of WrestleMania. And they're going off on each other. And then when that's done, they cut to the fucking announce booth. And the first thing you see on that announce booth is three clear bottles of Mountain Dew. We even got a commercial for Mountain Dew. A commercial during a pay-per-view. Those happen a lot now. Commercials during a pay-per-view. They never used to. That was one of the things we could look forward to in a pay-per-view. No commercials. But no, gotta sell. Gotta sell that product. Not even WWE product. They had enough of that in their fucking cutscenes with Sergeant Slaughter and Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and of course they got fucking uh, Farouk. They got Farouk to come in and say his one fucking line, grab his check and leave. But that's when they advertised the WWE product, these bouncing fuck wrestlers. I'm okay with that. They've been doing that for the longest time. It even got, it even became its own self-parody with DX, you know, when DX reformed and Triple H wasn't a shit whistler. You know, they, they would literally make promos where they would, they would self-parody the fact that they were advertising their product. You know, why well, Triple H, didn't you know you can find this on WWEshop.com? Now, this was them actually believing that Sergeant Slaughter and Hacksaw Jim Duggan would be playing with this shit. Sergeant Slaughter just wants to go home. Hacksaw Jim Duggan doesn't fucking know any better. But you know that Sergeant Slaughter is sitting there going, Get me the fuck out of this chicken shit outfit. Which is no hate on Sergeant Slaughter. He's fucking awesome. But let it die. Let the legends die. If they're going to come back to WWE, have it be during the WWE Hall of Fame induction ceremony where you give them what they deserve, which is not one fucking damn, but 
a Hall of Fame position. Because we deserve more than this. As viewers, 30 years. And I'm sure wrestling, wrestling was going on way before WrestleMania was even a thing. The AWA. And I've seen the AWA. Burnt copies, mind you, but I've seen it. These were WrestleMania. This one took place the day before my birthday in 2004. I didn't get the chance to see this one live, but picked this up, Madison Square Garden. I'm seeing people like Undertaker and Kane on the back of this box. Kane looks like a beast. Undertaker looks like a champion. Triple H, Shawn Michaels, and Chris Benoit. Back when they could fucking say Chris Benoit's name without having to bleep it out. Eddie Guerrero versus Kurt Angle. Before Eddie Guerrero's passing and Kurt Angle's eventual destruction into TNA. The Rock and McFoley, Rock and Sock Connection takes on Evolution in a two-on-three handicap match. Undertaker makes his long-anticipated return to Battle Kingdom. And do I even need to go into these? WrestleMania 16 to 20. <sighs> Ten years ago. Ten years ago this one took place. And ten years later, it's dead. It's just so dead. So that's been mitosis, my intricate thoughts on stuff I've seen. And to cap it off, wrestling's dead, guys. If we let it die, then eventually, much like The Undertaker, it'll just sit there and rot.